Cami with Real Southern Woman. I have got these ear things in my ears. I guess y'all can hear me. I'm trying to turn my fan off. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. You know me. There's always something going on. Um, it's nice to see y'all on a Monday night. My sister has been spending a couple of nights with me. So I've really enjoyed being with her. She's actually here tonight. She spent the night last night. And she's spending the night tonight. So we've had a really good supper last night. And then tonight we had fried okra and cream corn, sliced tomatoes. And I made filled peas with snaps today. I made some collard greens, but they're for tomorrow night. We're going to have some butter beans. But anyway, um, I hope y'all have had a blessed day. Our Bible study today is about who we hang out with. And um, so it's called Choose Godly Friends. This is coming out of Proverbs chapter 13. And then he does take a verse out of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. So um, I read a little bit about that. I've got these things in my ears and it makes me feel like I'm in a barrel. I guess you guys can hear me. Um, can y'all hear me? Can y'all tell me if you hear me or not, Marilyn? And, um, and then we're going to, I've got something in my eye. I got new glasses yesterday. I, I get my glasses from a place online and it's called iBuyDirect.com and I just love them. I can get bifocals for the price, uh, half the price if I go into a store and get them. And that way I get two pair. And a matter of fact, they had a buy one, get one free sale. So I got two pair of bifocals with my prescription um, and a pair of sunglasses with my prescription all for a hundred and I want to say $67, which is dirt cheap, y'all, and I just love their glasses. So, um, Kim says she can hear me. All righty. You going to come in and join us, Melissa? Come on, I'm going to lay over there. Probably. She's going to come in and join us, but she said she was going to lay on Mama's bed. She's got to uh, spend the night with me, and she's got to enjoy Mama's bed while she was here. I told her, I said, come over. You can sleep on Mama's bed. I sleep on it during the day and take naps. So since Melissa's been here, she had a nap on it today, and I had a nap in my own bed. Hi, everybody. So I'll let y'all say hey to her. She's laying in the bed. <laughs> I'm pulling shoes off. Hi. <laughs> so, um. We'll start our Bible study then. It's been fun seeing her. And I was telling, she was telling me about a bug she found the other day. And I was telling her about this. And I told y'all it was a Katie did, but it's really a Cacadia. Cacada. We're saying it wrong. Cicada. Cicada or something like that. But anyway, there she is, Melissa. Did you notice her in here? No. Is that a faint one? No, I found her on the porch. Oh, well, this one was alive. I, I, oh, she I, said hers was alive. Yeah. Well, it was alive the night before flying around out there, and then the next morning I went out there, and it was under my umbrella on the, on the floor. That's been around a lot of years. I don't yeah. know what it is. So let's do our Bible study. Y'all ready? Um, it says, Choose godly friends. He who walks with wise men shall will be wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. I was actually reading this yesterday. Um when I did my Bible, actually, it might have been before you even got here, because I was laying there when I read it, but anyway, I was reading this, it may have been the day before yesterday or yesterday, but I was doing my Bible reading, and so I went and I read the whole chapter of Proverbs, and it's amazing how much you can learn from the Proverbs, but he lets us know that if we walk with wise men, we'll be wise, and if we, uh, the companion of fools will suffer harm, and then he goes on to elaborate on that in the other parts, but it says, are your friends and associates godly people? And if you spend time with people who are walking with the Lord, it will help you grow closer to Him. This is because the company you keep influences how you view the situations and circumstances in your life. On the other hand, when you fail to fellowship with other strong believers, you will almost surely drift away from your heavenly Father. And that is true, and a lot of us want to think that we're too strong, or we're stronger than that, and they're not going to affect us, but and that we're going to affect them, and that's where Christians make the um, mistake of thinking that they're going to affect them in the in the 
for the greater good of Jesus Christ, when in fact it says in several different places in the Bible that, that the bad influence will be harder on us as Christians. So it's not saying that you can't be around somebody that's a bad influence. It's just saying don't hang out with them and don't, you know, uh, ask them for advice and that kind of thing. You should be, uh, the majority of your time should be around other believers so that you can be encouraged and you can talk about God and that kind of thing. So if you have to hang out with people and you're ashamed to say anything about God or you feel like if you say something about God, they won't like for you to be talking about it, then you might want to consider who you're hanging out with. It says, so consider... Do the people you associate with meditate on God's Word? Do they have a Christ-centered lifestyle? Do they have humble spirits and seek godly solutions? Melissa's phone is beeping. I'll turn the volume off. Um, it says, let's see. Do they have humble spirits and seek godly solutions to their problems? Well, Lord knows I don't have much of a humble spirit. Uh, I will say, and I had to work on that. And the, the the actual Bible study before this one made me think twice too. But uh, but you should still seek godly solutions to your problems. And if not, then you may need to re-examine the time you spend with certain people and how they influence your daily decisions, behaviors, and opinions. And then it takes us to First Corinthians, and it says another another place is First Corinthians fifteen thirty three. And it says that bad company corrupt, corrupts good morals. And um, it said God, God wants you to be wise. And one way he trains you to become so is through other believers who are actively glorifying and serving Jesus. So choose your influences carefully because it will shape the path of your life in astounding ways. And that is true. Um, yeah, the one before this one. And I'll tell you why I thought of this, and y'all can, you know. It was called Choose the Bridge, and it was for July the 14th. And it said, um, it talks about how we respond to things. And it says, and this is a good one also to talk about, so I guess we could read it too. Because it's a good thing to think about, and that is, it says, uh, Although the Lord has given you bread of privation, I guess is the... <laughs> I don't really, I, I should have looked that up if I were going to read it to you guys. And water of oppression, he, your teacher, will no longer hide himself, but your eyes will behold your teacher. And what this is about is it says we all carry heavy burdens at one point or another, and we experience difficult things in our life that shapes who we are. It says, and the truth is that when the trials happen during our childhoods, they often become an excuse for us to give up, treat others badly, and be negative. How often have you heard someone justify their wrong behavior because of the adversity they have experienced in their youth? And so, um, when I was thinking about, let me fix this. When I was thinking about, I wasn't thinking about the adversity I experienced in my youth, which I had plenty of. But I was thinking about um, <laughs> my adversity that I experienced when I was out there for that TV show in Los Angeles, I will say. I didn't always, uh, I didn't always act like I should have, I guess. Uh, but I just wasn't real happy about that environment out there. So um, I was just, it was a hard, it was a hard thing for me to do. One that I don't care to ever do again. I don't really want to be out there. I don't want to be a part of anything like that again. So uh, not that I didn't enjoy some of the families there, but it was. I don't look back on it and think it was just this great, wonderful experience. <laughs> I'll just tell you that. I think I would rather be in my own kitchen any day. Uh, and I know a lot of y'all probably think, good Lord, she should be thankful that God let her have that. And then here it even tells us, it says, but understand that you have a choice about how to respond to trials, both the ones in your past and those that you face today. You can see them either as a burden or a bridge as weights that weaken and discourage you, or as conduits the Lord uses to develop your character, strengthen your faith, and deepen your relationship with Him. And that's why I was feeling guilty about what I'm telling you, because you see how I feel about it. And I should be on the other leaf saying that it was a conduit that the Lord used to develop my character, strength, uh, strengthen my faith, and deepen my relationship with Him. Uh, but... See, I just want to say, but. So it just goes to show that 
you know, I probably didn't have the best attitude as, as, as one I could, as I should have about the whole thing. Um, and, and when I look back now and you get to see parts of the show, there was times, and you know, I do remember having fun and that, that the judges were fun and, and that we did pretty good. But like I said, most of the time I wasn't feeling very good. So that, I just wish that I could have felt like I do now when I was out there. But there's reasons for everything, and God knew that I was going to get hurt before it even started. So I guess um, it was what it was supposed to be, and I should be thankful that God gave me the opportunity uh, to go out there. Um, but anyway, let's talk about what 1 Corinthians 15, 33 teaches. It says, bad company corrupts good morals, and... Um, I had my Bible in. Oh, here it is. It's 1 Corinthians 15.33. And, um, but that's what the Word of God is supposed to do, y'all. When you read something like this, hopefully if it's working, you will be able to recall something in your mind that you've done recently or that you've done, and it convicts you. And that's exactly what that Bible study did to me yesterday, convicted me about being out there in California. And whether it's right or whether it's wrong, the main thing is that the Holy Spirit is convicting my heart. So um, that's a good thing. You know, at least the Holy Spirit's not giving up on me and he still talks to me, right? So it says in 1 Corinthians um, 15, verses 33, this is coming out of a section in the Bible that says effects of denying the resurrection. And I wanted to bring this up because I'm not one to pull a scripture out of the book and use it just when I want to for what I want to. And so um, since we were talking about, um, let us, eat, let's say, this, the scripture that he used about this says, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. But I'm going to tell you um, what was happening right here in this scripture time um, so that we just don't, you know, just grab it and say we can use it, okay? Now, I know Charles Stanley knows what he's doing and all that, but we still want to look at where this scripture come from, where, where what it come out of, and what it was talking about at the time it was used. This is in 1 Corinthians. This is a letter to the church. This is Paul, the apostle writing the, the Corinthian church, and um, he's talking about people who do not believe in the resurrection, okay, and I know this is another subject altogether, but I just want you to see how he applied it here, okay, so it's, so I'm, he, and it's pretty deep, as a matter of fact, but in a nutshell, I'm going to tell you what it is kind of in a nutshell. Y'all can go back and read it if you want to. But kind of in a nutshell, what it's, what it's talking about are there are people, he's letting them know, there are people that are in their presence that do not even believe in the resurrection of Christ. And he's letting them know that, that it's, not correct that they're evil if they do not believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the reason he's because and I'll and I'll give y'all a little summary of why, you know, why that is. But um the last part in here it says but what he's letting them know is that um I was looking for Okay, um, at the end of this pair, at, at the end of this verse, it says, um, "If the dead do not rise, comma, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die." So what he's saying is, there's people in their presence that are like, "There's no resurrection. Let's let's just eat and drink because tomorrow we might die." In other words, let's just do whatever we want to because tomorrow we might die. And so he says, do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. So he tells them that he's speaking this to their shame because they don't even realize 
that it's shameful that they are in the presence of people that don't even believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay, so in and that it, that they can be corrupted by being around people like this. So he lets them know that. Now I'm going to tell you what he's talking about, and that is the the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a biblical doctrine. Okay. Now, if you don't know what a biblical doctrine is, there's lots of things in this Bible that can be interpreted in different ways, okay, by different people on different accounts. Uh, but the doctrine, the true meat, the doctrine cannot be interpreted in different ways. And it is repeated enough in the word of God that it doesn't have to be questionable okay the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a true biblical doctrine so it is not something that you should bend on in other words if somebody wants to um, you know if one person wants to believe that uh, they can wear dresses to church and one person wants to believe that they don't need to be wearing dresses to church. Not that there's really any biblical scripture to that, because there's not. Um, even so, it's nothing to argue about, and it's not doctrine. It's nothing to fight about. Or you shouldn't be fighting anyway. But I'm just saying it's not biblical doctrine. It's not the what's going to get you to heaven, and the, and the things that matter the most are the doctrine and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is. Okay, so when somebody does not believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and when somebody does not believe that he was born of a virgin and that he was man, but he was God, and when somebody doesn't believe that he died on a cross for our sin and he was our sacrifice, and when somebody does not believe that he was resurrected um, and rose again on the third day, those are the things that matter. So you can hang out with other Christians of other faiths, but when they do not believe in the biblical doctrine of salvation and why we're saved and why we need a Savior, those things are a lot more important on who you're hanging out with, okay? And you shouldn't really be hanging out with people all the time who do not believe in the biblical doctrines of the Bible. Now, he says, um, Paul concluded his presentation on the doctrine of the resurrection by explaining there are two types of bodies, a natural and a spiritual body. The first man, Adam, was created with a natural physical body, which became subject to decay and death. That's Adam and Eve. Okay? Adam. Jesus Christ was the last Adam. He overcame death and was given a spiritual, glorified, immortal body. Okay? It says, therefore, by virtue of creation, Adam was of the earth. And by virtue of the resurrection, Christ was from heaven. Paul said that these two were prototypes. The first bearers of the two kinds of bodies. The first man, Adam, represents all those who share and have a physical body. The last Adam represents all those who bear his spiritual likeness. The first Adam was human. The last Adam was infinitely more. Believers have born the image of the former, and they shall someday also bear the image of the latter. Isn't that encouraging? So he's letting us know that there's a spiritual body and there's an earthly body. And we are born in our earthly bodies as Adam was born. And one day we will be in the form of our spiritual body just as Christ is through the resurrection, okay? So that is a biblical doctrine. And so he's just letting us know that we can get discouraged when we're hanging out with people um, that do not believe in the doctrine 
um, the same doctrine that we do, okay? Um, and like I said, I mean, it's the really, really important things that matter the most, which is the way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father but by Him. So if you're hanging out with people that believe completely different, um, just make sure it's acquaintance hanging out and, you know, enough that you can give them a few nuggets about the good Lord, show them how a Christian lives, but don't make it a habit to be their best friend. Um, and, he, I mean, it's just plain, plain. He's just plain and letting us know that um, we can be corrupted. Um, and probably because, think about it, we're a lot more flesh than we are spiritual here in this earth. And a lot of us, if you think more than you should of your spiritual self, you can, I mean, just remember that all of us can fall. And even if we're Christians and even if we pray and even if we're in the Word of God, we still think about how many minutes in one day that you spend spiritually and how many minutes in a day that you spend in this world physically and in the fleshly form and all you've got to do is say that and you will know that our fleshly side has um pull on us now does it mean that we can't overcome sin absolutely not uh we can overcome any sin because of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. But will we overcome the sin is the question, not can we, okay? So um, it's just best not to put ourselves in situations where we are tempted or influenced, okay? We should run from those, really. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's Bible study. And um, I was looking... Do what? You're all through it so fast? Yeah, it usually lasts about 20 to 30 minutes. It's almost like till 80 Sermon Sunday. Yep. Oh, is it really? Mm -hmm. Melissa said it was almost like my brother's preaching Sunday. My brother's a preacher. He preaches at Colored Valley Baptist Church where we grew up in Colored Valley, the name of our cooking show. It was about parties. I couldn't go first, but it's... It was about parties? Priorities. Oh, priorities and putting God first. Yeah. But it was... Very similar. And um, so she said she actually recorded him preaching. For, and I believe she said it was on his wife's Facebook page. If you want to hear Eddie preaching, since some of y'all have seen him cooking. It's on mine, too. It's on her Facebook page, which is Melissa Carney. So but are y'all's Facebook pages public, though? They're probably is. not. But Yours is? The preaching is. The preaching is public. Well, the part so you part can two. look under Jennifer Benefield, B E N E. Hers is not public. Oh, it's not. I don't think. Mine is. Melissa said she put it on public. So if you want to see Eddie preach, it's Melissa, M A L I S S A, Carney, C A R N E Y. And it was Eddie's sermon this past Sunday. So you should be able to find it pretty easy if she's got it on public. If for some reason one of y'all want to look at Eddie preaching or hear him preach, and you didn't get to, and um, then I'll make a way to make sure y'all can get up on that and take a listen yeah, to him. Public, it. Because he is a there's sweetheart. A he really is. And there's a part he's a lot more humble in his personality and stuff than I am. I am. He's a type A personality, believe it or not. He even do that visual. Um, but he is so much, he's just a lot different than me. <laughs> um, I'm a lot more abrasive. I get that from my dad and my mama too, really. Um, Eddie took more after our granddaddy, which was more of a gentler side of things. But anyway, I hope that um, y'all had a blessed day, and I hope y'all enjoyed the Bible study tonight. And just remember that, um, you know, we all need to work on ourselves all the time. And um, we should never get to the point where we think we've arrived, or we think we can't fall, or we think that uh, we got it all together because we never really do. And we should always know that we need Jesus Christ in our life, his word, his love, his protection, all of it. We need him. So let's say our prayers, and I will see you guys tomorrow at 9 o'clock, Lord willing, right? 
Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for the Bible study. We thank you for the freedom that we have here in, in this um, place that we can believe what we what we know, we, um, and that is that you sent your son here to die for us, and and we are very thankful for your sacrifice and your love. We are glad that we do live here in America where we do have freedom of religion, and we should never be ashamed in what we believe in, and we thank you for being able to be in a place where we don't feel ashamed. If for any reason any of us are in a situation with friends or even co-workers that we feel like um, that we're hanging out with them, but if we were to bring up your son, Jesus Christ, that they wouldn't like it very much, I pray that we would pray for them, but that we would pull ourselves away, away from them enough that the influence doesn't rub off on us from the world um, in our daily decisions. And um, because I know that no matter who you're hanging out with, you do ask advice and you ask them what they think. And we should be um, looking for godly wisdom from godly people instead of looking for wisdom from worldly people. And help us be aware of that in every situation that we are in, whether it's to purchase something or to talk about our husband or our wife or children, advice, whatever it is. I pray that you would lead God and direct us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Um, Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful evening. And I'm going to visit with my sister. You're going to go try goat cheese for the first time. She bought goat cheese. And it says cranberry cinnamon goat cheese that oh, she got from bread. Aldi. Tell them, well, she's in, she's under the covers, but she's oh, got her clothes yeah, on. Yeah, I just loved it. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe they've never tried goat cheese. And I bought her, I believe it is garlic. Let me see. Hold on one second, y'all. I don't know for sure if y'all can hear. So I'm going to turn off my Bluetooth. Yes, they can hear. That little phone's loud. It's, um. Uh, Wait a minute, I'm going to turn off my Bluetooth. The Bluetooth's around my neck, so. I bought garlic and chive goat cheese, a French baguette bread, I bought fresh sourdough bread, and I bought cranberry cinnamon goat cheese. Oh, and I love it. But I can't believe they've never tried it. She says it's the best so stuff ever. Y'all, I've never tried goat cheese. Really good. And I'm on a diet. Y'all know that. And we had, But we had vegetables for supper, no meats. So I'm going to go in here and taste her goat cheese, but I'm not going to eat a lot of it because I already had, y'all, I found a new ice cream that I'm in love with. And let me tell y'all about it. And because I don't even like Eddie's, is it Eddie's? Eddie's ice cream. I typically don't even like it, but I love chocolate almond ice cream. Love it. And Mayfield's is okay, but their almonds just are not all that anymore. They don't put nice big size almonds in their chocolate almond ice cream anymore. And so I just don't like it as much as I used to. But they used to have one at Winn-Dixie called Prestige. Theirs was amazing, but they quit making it. So I was, I've looked and looked and looked and looked for ice cream with almonds, but I don't like the almonds that have chocolate on them. I do not like those at all because I like to taste the almond. So they have some that are chocolate coated, but I don't like that. So, um, and then Bluebell has a pistachio almond that's really good, but I want chocolate almond. Anyway, I go into the grocery store this week and I get Edie's Mocha It's, it's coffee mocha with almonds, and I don't know if it's it's mocha java, or I don't know how they list it, but y'all, it's a mocha, it, it's got chocolate swirls with cho coffee ice cream with roasted almonds in it. Oh, my Lord. So, Chris has looked at me every single day I go in there, and I get my one serving, and I put it in a bowl, and I've ate it every day, and I know we're on a diet. And he looks at me every day, and he'll go, you eating your ice cream? I'm like, yes. Because he goes out and runs 
and walks and exercises and I take a nap. And I also have to have my treat every day, no, no matter what. Because, I mean, hey, I might get hit by a car tomorrow and die. So if I want a little bit of ice cream, I'm going to have it. But I'm not eating too much, y'all. I'm just eating my little serving. I just bought you Snickers ice cream bar. I'm not eating that Snickers ice cream bar. She just it's bought a, me a Snickers ice cream it's bar. It's 180 calories with dark chocolate. Dark chocolate's good for you. I can't. I'm not eating that because I'd rather have my chocolate almond. You can give it to me. But anyway, uh, she Dang. comes over here, skinny little rail that she is, wears a size 6 in her pants, and brings... Krispy Kreme donuts, chocolate covered, filled donuts. Goes out tonight, gets Snickers ice cream bars, goat cheese, bread. Gotta eat, gotta eat. But I have, when we eat, you know, I feed her. She's like, I was cutting up okra tonight. And it was more than <laughs> enough okra. And she said, Lord of mercy, you didn't get enough okra, but about, about for about two people. And I said, yes, it is. And then when I fed her last night, we had rice, Ugh. we had yeah, they eat spinach, like birds here. we had spinach on the rice. I made I made a poached fish with a sauce and some fried squash. And I was like, "That's all you're getting? Do you think that's because it wasn't real big on the plate?" No, it looked like you go to one of those fancy restaurants and you're still really hungry when you leave and you go buy a hamburger. See, I tell her she. They eat like birds. I don't see why they even eat to be on a diet. Yeah, we do. We yeah. don't really no, overeat that much. We never eat left. I mean, we never go back for seconds. We hardly ever eat a bread. A lot of people think we eat, you know, a lot of really bad food for us because I'm a Collard Valley cook. But, you know, I've taught y'all to only make one starch at supper time. And most of the time we don't I have bread. And, but anyway, um, but we we just don't have real fast metabolisms like she does. So, um, anyway, I wanted to try this goat cheese, y'all, and I hope y'all have a good night. And I'm having fun with my sister, except she's trying to ruin her diet. So, okay. just because she wears a size 6 don't mean everybody does. Right? Right. And I've only lost, like, 2 pounds, and Chris has probably lost close to 10. But you know what? I'm going to lose it a lot slower because I can't exercise physically. I'm not able. I'm not going to try. Uh, because every time I do, I get bursitis or I hurt something. And so I will, I will lose it slow, but I'll be happy, y'all. I love ya. Bye. See you tomorrow.